Have you had a hard time getting your offers accepted in such a competitive market? Are you tired of getting declined over and over and over again? If that's the case, in this video, I'm gonna tell you some of the best strategies that I and some of the top agents that I know have used to get their offers accepted in such a crazy market like the one that we're in today. Hey everybody, my name is Lillian Chukwizi. If you're new to my YouTube channel, welcome to the family. I drop multiple videos every single week about real estate, marketing, and investing. And all that I ask is that you please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more videos just like this. So let me start out by saying that you have to be more confident about the offers that you put in. And you also have to transfer that level of confidence to your buyers because they also need to feel confident about the effort that is going into the deal. Honestly, this is a really tough market because it's so competitive with the low supply and the high demand, but people are still buying and deals are still closing. And to a certain extent, there are more buyers trying as hard as they can to close on their homes so they can hopefully avoid being priced out as the market continues to increase and home prices continue to increase. So between the deals that I've done and the successful agents that I've talked to, I want to share with you guys some of the strategies that have shown to be effective during these times. Number one, of course, one of the best ways to increase your chances of getting your offer accepted is to offer more money, but it doesn't always have to be on the purchase price. You can offer more money when it comes to the earnest money deposit. Now your earnest money deposit is put into the deal to show good faith that you plan to actually move forward with the purchase. Continue on whatever that is in your contract offer. Earnest money is typically one to 2% of the purchase price. So on about a hundred thousand dollar home, your earnest money might be anywhere from one to $2,000. But if you want to stand out from the competition, you might want to increase it to something like $5,000. But the good part about this is that your earnest money is applied directly to your down payment. And if need be, your buyer can get their earnest money back refunded to them if the house doesn't check off on the inspections, appraisal, or any other contingencies that you put in the contract. Number two. Now the next strategy is one that I highly underestimated because I didn't think it would work, but apparently it does. I've talked with a good amount of agents who have actually written cover letters with their offers. So basically an agent will write a heartfelt letter to a seller on top of their offer to explain the buyer's personal situation in hopes that the seller will empathize and choose their buyer over all the other offers. Now in most cases you will assume a seller simply wants the highest and best offers from buyers. However, sometimes a seller will be more lenient and empathetic towards a buyer if they like you enough despite a lower price. If a buyer is offering the same price as the others, a personalized letter may stand out amongst the competition because the seller might relate and develop a personal connection to that buyer, which might give them a better chance. Now, the third thing you can do is include an escalation clause. Now you can strengthen your offer in today's low inventory market with an escalation clause, which is basically an addendum that states that your offer will outbid other offers to up to a maximum price. So basically if a seller is asking for $300,000 and you're offering $310,000 with an escalation of $5,000, over competing offers up to $350,000. This means if the highest bid is $320,000 from somebody else, then you are willing to go up to $325,000 to beat them. But if the highest bid is $350,000, which is your maximum amount, then you're telling your seller that you can pay up to $355,000. So here's where it gets a little tricky. With your initial offer at $310,000, but your escalation clause up to $350,000, your seller might be thinking, why can't you just offer that $350,000 straight up? Another thing to consider is that your lender is required to use a sales price or appraised value to set the loan amount. So if the property doesn't appraise for the contract, the sales price, your buyer will have to make up the difference using their own funds. So just keep that in mind. This strategy does work, but the only thing you can really control is making sure your buyer will not be priced out with the loan amount in regards to the max amount that they are offering. Quick pause here guys, if you are getting value from this video, please go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right back into it. Now another way to help get your buyer's offers accepted is to be flexible. In this market, it should pretty much go without saying, but realtors, you need to coach your buyers on being flexible. In order to get the deal done and for your buyer to close on their home, they might have to be willing to take the seller's needs into consideration and respond accordingly. Now, as I mentioned before, sometimes money isn't the only thing that gets sellers to budge. I've completed a deal where my buyer was willing to do a lease back with the current owner, which would allow my buyer to still purchase the home and close on the home. Meanwhile, allowing the homeowner to stay in the house for another 60 days 
on a lease paying the new homeowner, which was my buyer. So that was beneficial for the seller because they needed another two months before they were finally ready to move into their next home. On the other hand, if a seller is looking to move fast or the home is vacant and the seller wants to get someone in the home as soon as possible, then maybe offer to close on a shorter time frame. Again, discuss this with the listing agent and try to figure out what the major concerns are of the seller and solve those concerns in your offer as much as possible. In most cases, agents and buyers will offer what they think will get the deal done and what they want, but you have to really take into consideration what the seller wants, provide the seller with that solution that still makes sense in a way for you to get what you want as well. Now, another thing you can do is discuss with the listing agent a reverse contingency after submitting your initial offer. Now, in such a competitive market for buyers like we are in today, one of the main concerns that sellers have when selling is that they might not be able to find a house after they sell. And the last thing they want to do is sell their home and be homeless, right? So once they accept your offer, their agent can actually put in the contract stating that the seller is willing to sell only if they find a suitable house within a reasonable time frame. So essentially this reverse contingency gives them the time that they need to find a new home before they have to sell to you and your client. Once they find a new home, the contingency will now be removed and you can proceed with the sale. Now, another way to get your offer accepted is to work with the right lender for you and your client. You want to work with a mortgage lender that will go above and beyond for your clients in ways that other loan officers wouldn't be able to do so or wouldn't do so. As you get more experience as a real estate agent, you'll learn that mortgage lenders or mortgage loan officers, they all work differently. Everybody has a different value proposition to offer you. And in a lot of cases, real estate agents are usually looking for the same thing, which is good communication, um, being available, and just working in a time effective manner. And each mortgage company has different guidelines and different procedures in order to get loans pre-approved and get them closed. So when it comes down to it, there's two ways that mortgage lenders are usually able to help realtors get their offers accepted. And one of the ways is for mortgage lenders to have a thorough pre-underwriting process in order to do the pre-approval. Now there's a lot of loan officers or mortgage lenders that will get information from buyers and just there's no documentation behind it and they will just write up a pre-approval letter hoping that you know the buyer is telling the truth and then once you go under contract then it'll go to underwriting and then they will confirm or deny that those things are true. Now that's pretty risky because now your buyer's agent or you as the buyer agent have now done all this work. Your buyer has now gotten really indulged in the process and looking at homes and everything. Now you get to the point where you're under contract and then you can't close because now the documents are confirming that their finances are not in order the way they thought they were. Now you want to work with mortgage loan officers who are able to take that information and analyze it up front. Obviously it won't be a full underwriting process in the beginning, but there are mortgage lenders who do do that work up front, which hedges against, you know, not being able to get a loan later down the line. Now the second thing is you want to work with a mortgage loan officer who is willing to get in the game with you. Work with one who's willing to call the listing agent after you put in your offer and just reassure them that your buyer has strong finances. Real estate is a team sport, so you have to put in that teamwork and that team effort in order to get deals done. So you want to work with a loan officer who's going to go above and beyond for you and your client. It just provides the listing agent another touch point and a little more confidence with this particular buyer. And it's obviously not always going to work, but it does work. So guys, Take these strategies and start applying them right away because this market is super hot, inventory is still super low, and prices are continuing to rise. So things definitely don't look like they're slowing down this year at all, so it's best to equip yourselves and start implementing these strategies right away and get some deals closed. Now, just to let you guys know, if you are looking to get more help as far as you know, getting your offers accepted and also really generating leads to get more at-bats, basically get more chances to put in offers, Make sure you join the Facebook group. I'm going to link it down below, but it's basically a group dedicated to help real estate agents generate leads on autopilot using social media and other forms of online marketing. So make sure you guys go ahead and join that if you are interested in learning different ways to generate leads and grow your business. And of course, I hope this video was valuable to you. If it was, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Instagram and TikTok. And until the next time, guys, stay safe and stay blessed.